All right, how's everybody doing today? Today we're going to take a look at something that you've seen before. In section 2.5, we're going to be using reasoning from properties of algebra. Now, with that said, we're going to go ahead and take a look at something that should be familiar to you already. When we take a look at reasoning using properties in algebra, the number, the letters A, B, and C, when we use these in all of our properties, they are going to represent real numbers. So let's take a look at our first property. The first property is going to be the addition property of equality and that just simply states if a equals b then a plus c equals b plus c. Really what you're doing is you're just adding the same thing to both sides of an equation, the same number. Similar to that is the subtraction property of equality and in the subtraction property of equality that just says if a equals b then a minus c equals b minus c. So again, you just subtract the same number from both sides of an equation. Next, we've got the multiplication property of equality. And for this one, if you have a equal b, then you can multiply each side by the same number. In this case, ac equals bc. So if we start out a equals b, then we can also multiply both sides by the same number, and we would end up with ac equals bc. Likewise, we've got the division property of equality. Now the division property of equality says if a equals b and, so there's one other thing here, and c is not equal to zero, then a divided by c equals b divided by c. So c cannot be zero because you cannot divide by zero, at least up until this point in your mathematical careers. Later on you'll learn some techniques and other courses on how to deal with dividing by zero. Now the substitution property of equality. This property says, hey, if a equals b, then you can take a out and you can substitute that for b in any equation or expression. So if a equals b, a can go out, b can go in, in any kind of equation or expression. Now notice the last property that we have here. It's the distributive property. There is no of equality on the end of this. So when we go to use these in proofs, that we'll uh, see in a little bit. Anytime you use this property, you're just going to call it the distributive property. It is not the distributive property of equality. So the distributive property says a times a quantity b plus c is equal to ab plus bc. And we're going to take a look at this in our first algebraic proof. Now, we're going to take a look at example a here. We have 2x plus 5 equals 30 minus 3x. On the statement side, Anytime you're going to start an algebra proof, you're just going to go ahead and write down the very, very first equation that you're given. And the reason for that is given. Now the next step, there's four different terms here, so it's really kind of up to you how your brain is going to reason and think through this. So it's totally up to you which way you want to start, but I like to keep the variables positive. And I'm taking a look at 2x and then the other variable on the right hand side negative 3x and of those two terms I'm thinking I want to move the the 3x term over to the left hand side so to do that I'm going to need to add 3x to both sides to come up with 5x plus 5 equals 30 now if I added 3x to both sides that's going to be the addition property of equality now taking a look at what I have here I've got 5x plus 5 equals 30 I'm going to go ahead and subtract 5 from both sides, which means I'm going to be using the subtraction property of equality. Now when you guys write these reasons out, please be sure that you add the of equality on there. Don't be lazy and just write addition property. Make sure that you write addition property of equality, subtraction property of equality. You have to name the entire property, not just pieces of it. When we do that, we will end up with 5x equals 25. And then lastly, we're going to divide both sides by 5 using the division property of equality to come up with x equals 5. So that's it. This is really your first kind of step into formalizing a proof. Some of you may have done this in Algebra 1, depending on who you had as a teacher. If your teacher made you do this in Algebra 1, go back and thank them for it because it's going to make some things easier for you down the road here. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at example B. Now again, of course, we're going to start out by writing our original equation and our reason is going to be given. Now there's two different ways you could start this problem, but I'm going to go ahead and start it this way. I'm going to use the distributive property. 
And when you use the distributive property, you have to be really, really careful. So big time error alert here. A lot of times people will distribute the negative four to the first term and they'll forget to distribute it to the second term. So make sure you use the distributive property appropriately and you'll come up with negative 44 X equals or minus eight equals 80. Now, third statement and the third reason. Now, if I take a look at what I have in my second statement, I can kind of see, yeah, I'm going to add eight to both sides. So I'm going to use that addition property of equality. When I do that, I will end up with negative 44 X equals 88. And then lastly, last thing we've got to do is use the division property of equality to come up with X equals negative two. Now, in both of these examples, I want you to pay really close attention to how nice, neat, and organized our statements are. The equal signs are lined up. Everything is really tight. So when you guys are doing your writing, make sure that you keep it just as tight. Make sure you keep it just as organized. Now, what we're going to take a look at next are some of our properties. We've got three of them, the reflexive property of equality, symmetric property of equality, and the transitive property of equality. First up is going to be the reflexive property of equality. And that just says for real numbers, for any real number A, A equals A common sense. Same thing can be said about segment lengths. For any segment AB, well, AB is going to be equal to AB. Likewise, for an angle measure, for any angle A, the measure of angle A is going to equal the measure of angle A. So the reflexive property of equality is something that uh, we may use in some of the proofs coming up later on in the next section. The symmetric property of equality, now this is the property where you're going to switch the values a and b for real numbers. So for any real number a and b, if a equals b, then b equals a. So you want to think about it kind of almost like a mirror where you switch to the other side. Because if you're looking in a mirror and you raise your right hand, really the reflection you're going to get, it's going to look like you're raising your left hand in the mirror. Segment length, same kind of deal for that. You're going to have for any segments a and b and cd, if a, b equals cd, then you can switch them to say CD equals AB. Likewise for angle measures, if you have any two angles A and B, if the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B, then the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle A. Now symmetric property, one way that I remember this one is because symmetric starts with the letter S. And for all of these, whether you're dealing with real numbers, segment length, or angle measure, you are switching what's on each side of the equal sign. So that's my way of remembering. Symmetric starts with S, and S is the first letter of the word switch. Just one way that I remember it. If you have your own way, make sure that you share it so that other people can benefit from your knowledge as well. Next up, we've got the transitive property of equality. Now the transitive property starts out like this for real numbers. For any real numbers, A, B, and C, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. And with this kind of property, what the way I kind of think about it is I'm cutting out the middleman. If two things are equal to the same thing, and in this case for real numbers, that thing would be B. If A and C are both equal to B, well then it just makes sense that A and C are the same thing as well. Likewise for segment lengths, if we've got any three segments, A, B, C, D, and E, F, if A, B equals C, D, and C, D equals E, F, then AB is going to be equal to EF. Lastly, we've got our angle measures. And for any three angles A, B, and C, if the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B, and the measure of angle B equals measure of angle C, then measure of angle A equals measure of angle C. So that's it for, for this. There's not really a whole lot that we're going to do for this piece of it, but we're going to be applying these later on when we take a look at some of our proofs in the next section. So that concludes today's lesson on reasoning using properties from algebra. Hope you guys have a good day.